You might have noticed that some class methods like the initializer in Python have funny names which start and end in double underscores. And you might have seen others around too, like len, get item, or stir. And this isn't just for fun, it means something special in Python. But I find that people really have a hard time explaining what it means. Really, it's as simple as this. Methods starting and ending with double underscores define the behavior for some particular syntax. For example, the init method defines the behavior for putting parentheses after a class name. Like that. That is, it defines the behavior for initialization. We call these methods, which start and end with double underscores, magic methods. And again, the key explanation that you need to remember is magic methods define the behavior for a particular syntax. And Python recognizes several different magic methods. So let me explain what these do. So for example, the len method defines a behavior for what's returned when you call Python's built-in len method on an instance of a class. So len of the book is gonna be the len of the pages. The str method or the string method returns what the representation of the object should be as a string. And by default, that's what's shown when you print the object. So when I print the instance of this class, it's gonna show me what's returned from the string method. And the final one I'll implement here is the getItem method. This one defines the behavior for how an object is indexed with square brackets. And that's really important because you use that kind of notation everywhere. So this magic method is gonna be called when I write something like this. That's the square bracket indexing. And every time I do that, I have to pass in an index. And that's why the get item expects index as an argument in this position here. And so what we need to write in this function is, so what's the behavior for how I should index this object? So let's run all of that and see what happens. The init magic method calls the initializer here. I print the len of the book, which returns me what's defined in the len method. Then I print the whole book. It returns me the title, the pages, and the blurb all stacked together. And then I index the book. And that runs the getItem method, which returns me the page at that index. That's how I've chosen to implement this. But what's really important to notice is that you can implement these methods however you want, depending on your specific use case of the object that you're trying to build. So whatever behavior makes sense in the case of the object that you're trying to model. And this is one of the key points of object-oriented programming. It lets you totally customize the behavior of your custom data types. But before you implement these methods, the syntax will either do the default behavior, which probably isn't useful in your case, or it will throw an error. That's the default print there, which isn't very useful. And there are a bunch of other magic methods that you can use as well. And you can see a full list of them online. There are methods for defining how mathematical operations should be applied to your object. So here's the different mathematical operators. Less than, less than or equals, equals, not equals, greater than, greater than or equals. There's methods for how your object should be represented in bytes or applying string formatting to it or whatever syntax Python has. You can define the behavior for it by implementing these magic methods. If you're still with me, then you understand Python better than I think most people do. And if you understand these magic methods, you'll be able to take your code to the next level and model the entities that appear in your use case in a way that's much more useful.